So, oh yeah, we'll let you watch Alex. See, you'll see how this is done. Kind of. Really, really simple process. Uh, this is the testing. That is an actual hot casing or pig intestine. They clean it out. Uh, all of our sausage are linked in that. We don't use synthetic casing. Can I feel? Oh yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. Um, so when I say blood sausage, is this the same? Oh, as no, no, blood sausage is entirely. Yeah, yeah. No, I feel this. I'm actually. <laughs> um, this press just comes down as I turn the crank, and it pumps the sausage out into the casing, and then uh, you'll see I can link it up here in a minute. Making sausage, you just churn it out really fast. One of the most frustrating things is when we get a bad case or a bad, uh, bag of casing, and it explodes, and as you're trying to link it, and you're just screaming, just like, oh, stop. It's really, really, really good. So this is how you can, you know, make them as long or as short as you want. Um, I usually do a little bit wider than both my thumbs. Kind of pinch it off, and then, and then you just kind of go along and keep linking it up. Would you mind repeating the ingredients just for uh... Uh, I think I can just spout it off the top of my head. We use chili powder, paprika, powdered milk, roasted red pepper, garlic, coriander, salt, black pepper. Jeremy, am I missing anything? Beef stock. And beef base. Why do you need the powdered milk? Uh, the powdered milk, uh, it's a little easier to, it doesn't liquefy the, the meat as much. So it doesn't run when you cook it. If we were to dump like a cup of milk in there, we'd just make it all really gushy. And it's a pain in the butt to link because it won't it won't stay in the, the casing. But why do you need milk in sausage? Uh, it was just part of the traditional recipe that was handed to us. We didn't want to deviate from it. It was like a grandfather recipe, literally. Why well, you only half the group heard that? Yeah, so we had an, an employee work back here named Ethan Madrieta. His uh, grandfather was Basque. He actually brought the recipe in was like, we should start making this recipe. It's my grandfather's recipe. And it stuck. How, how many years ago was that? 11. 11 years ago. So we've been using the same recipe for 11 years. What we also do, and it's probably the, the greatest thing I think we produce uh, next to the dry edge ribeye, is we, we will smoke these chorizos. We'll keep them linked and we'll throw them in our smoker for how long? Like a couple of hours. And it's, uh, I wish we had some right now, but it's easily, the best sausage we sell, the smoked trees up, hands down. The smoked, the garlic goat sausage, yeah, we also get goat. Um, that's a weird thing, is it get goat? <laughs> we get goat. Um, yeah, we get local goat. We make a really killer uh, garlic lamb sausage with it, or uh, excuse me, garlic goat sausage. It's, a, it's amazing. We also get local lamb. And uh, Alex is a pro here. You can see how fast he links to the sausages. And that's, that's kind of your chorizo links right there. I blew one up on accident. Yeah.